for about a day and a half to two days. I didn't know where she was. I called everywhere from Detroit to Texas to everywhere I could think of that she might be going, you know, a facility, a jail, or even uh, a holding camp for immigrants. The second day came and she called me from the Sault Ste. Marie. I never thought to look north. I was able to go up there and take her her passport and her ID and drop some money off in her and her parents' accounts. Um, and I visited her for, it was only supposed to be 15 minutes, but the CEOs gave us the full hour and a half. And uh, she was adorable, but heartbreaking. <laughs> um, she's so little, you know. And she had on the smallest jumpsuit, and it just hung off of her. So it was, it was adorable, but heartbreaking. Uh, there I got to tell her, you know, it's going to be all right. I'm going to do what I'm, whatever I can. So that's what I'm doing. Up until very, very recently, if a person was in the United States of America without proper documentation, their presence here did not make them a criminal. The United States, through Homeland Security, has been increasingly, especially since 911, equating uh, undocumented people with terrorists. And so uh, even in official documents, the, the, the two groups used to be completely separate, terrorists as they ought to be, different from people with, uh, with an undocumented presence. But now, even in government writings, the two groups are, are pretty much almost completely one group. So now someone with an undocumented presence is by nature criminalized by the federal government and even to the point that due process has been um, just unbelievably removed. She came here since she was six years old. She's been here for 18 years. She graduated high school with honors. She's worked two jobs at a time a couple times, at least held at least one job. She's never been without a job. Hasn't collected welfare or anything like that. She's been a model citizen, no, no criminal background. And just because they're from somewhere else doesn't mean they're not human. There's families being ripped apart. There's little kids getting put in foster homes while their parents are going to Mexico. There's great people, honest, hardworking people that are out here bettering our communities and we're throwing them away. It doesn't make sense to me. My situation with Elizabeth, I'm going to fight it to the end. And uh, whatever I got to do, I got to do it. I'm going to make sure everything's legal so we never have to go through this again. She's in a border town down in Mexico. They don't have but one mattress to sleep on for the three of them. The poverty down there is crazy and the crime is ridiculous. She's in a safer part. She won't be safe until I can bring her back. I can't begin to tell everybody how much it means to Liz and I to have this type of support. It helps us give the drive. You know, our love for each other is drive enough, but to know that we got that many people to just stand behind us, you know, that means a lot. And uh, my mother, bless her heart, she's been doing everything she can to help us out. And, you know, I've tried not to think about it. I know I will when I leave how heartbroken she'll be, but proud. My son, Russell Thomas Horn Jr., is what heroes are made out of. I never knew much about this until this happened to my family. And you could just cut off my right arm. You know, it's just, it's just so hard to, because they're always, your your children are always your babies, and there's, not, there's nothing I can do to help him except keep fighting back here and trying to raise money back here, and and that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to get, get stuff started so we can get him back home and safe. <laughs>